have time to play around. And forgive me this morning, I, I don't have time to play with you. There are a lot of plans out there. Plans for salvation. There is the Baptist plan. There is the Catholic plan. There is the Jehovah Witness plan. And there's the Mormon plan. I even heard there was a Pentecostal plan. <laughs> but I'm not really concerned about all those plans. What I want is God's plan. His plan is for everybody, every culture, every denomination, every religion. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. God's got a plan and it's for you. When I open up the Bible to study the plan of salvation, I recognize that in order for us to be beneficiaries of God's plan, we must be born again. To be born again is to be born into the church. Now God only has one church. He doesn't have a bunch of churches. Jesus said upon this rock, I'm gonna build my church. Our job is to find the church. And since there are so many churches, how can we find the church? In the book of Jude, Jude says contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints in other words if you're gonna find yourself a church you better find one that preached what Paul preached do it the way Peter did it and believe the way John believed find a church that is in accordance with what's written not with what the pastor learned at Bible college and what's been passed down by tradition but make sure your salvation is certified by the scripture God's got a plan what is the plan it's in Acts chapter 2 glory to God you know what we're gonna do we're gonna go back we're going to go back to the first day of church the first day of church because you got to realize the church hasn't always been here God's church has not always been here all through the Old Testament from the book of Genesis all the way to the prophet Malachi there is no church established Matthew Mark Luke and John represented the transition from the Old Testament into the New Testament the Gospels were the biographies of Jesus Christ then if you go over the book of Acts and begin at the book of Romans all the way to the book of Revelation which really aren't really books per se but rather letters these letters were written to the church that has been established so in the Old Testament no church established Matthew Mark Luke and John no church established Romans to Revelation church established written to the church but there is only one place in the whole Bible where you can find the church being established, being born, being originated, and that's in the history book of Acts. To know how the church got started, to go to the first day of church, you gotta go to the book of Acts. That's why the devil don't like the book of Acts. He can't stand the book of Acts. He rather, he, he wants you, you want to be saved? Go to book of Romans. You want to be saved? Go to 1 Thessalonians. You want to be saved? Go to 1 Corinthians. But you can't find the salvation plan of God in any other book but in the book of Acts where it is recorded, where it is established, where it is explained. So we're going to go to that history book and we're going to go to the first day of church Jesus told the disciples he said tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high 
In other words, he said, I, want you, I don't want you to go preaching. I don't want you to go doing no ministry until you be endued with the Holy Ghost. Wait for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Father. They went to the upper room and they prayed and they waited for the outpouring of his spirit that would begin the church age. And in the second chapter of the book of Acts, the Bible teaches us that when they were all together, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. This, this is the first day of church. It swept into that room. And while they were sitting there, praising, worshiping God, the power of the Holy Ghost fell on them. And the Bible says they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. It had never happened like this before. They had never experienced anything like this before. This was the first church service. And I'm gonna tell you something, you ain't never been to church until you've been in a Holy Ghost church. You don't know what you are missing until you get in a service where the wind of the spirit gets to moving. That's church. That's church. That's the way church is supposed to be. You can't predict the Holy Ghost. You can't control the Holy Ghost. He can breathe in here any way he wants to, anyhow he wants to. Church was never meant to be quiet. Church was never meant to be a place where you go to sleep. There's supposed to be some fire in the church. There's supposed to be some life in the church. There's supposed to be some noise in the church. Man, they got so excited. They bust out the doors, came outside on the balcony of the upper room. And it was right about the time that the other churches was letting out their service. They came driving down the road and they looked up and saw all these people on the balcony of the upper room. The crowd began to slow down. What are they doing? Church pulled to be over. Can you see it? Cars pull off. I know, I know they ain't had cars back then. Pull off to the side of the road, people getting out. What are they doing? Lord have mercy. We don't act like that at our church. I can't believe them people. Look at that man right there. Look at that man twirling around. Looking like a human helicopter. Look at that. They running and ain't nobody chasing them. What is going on in that church? My God, we never seen it like this. Something is moving. Something is a happening. Hallelujah. It's the first day of church. The crowd started gathering. The crowd started gathering around. Somebody said, somebody said, I I know what's going on. I know what's going on. What's going on? Them people drunk. Isn't that what it says in the Bible? Isn't that what it says in the Bible? The Apostle Peter, he heard it. Apostle Peter heard it. He looked around. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me, let me, let me straighten this up real quick. They down there saying we drunk. Peter, Peter walked up to the balcony of that upper room without no microphone. He lifted up his voice and he said, you people, these folks are not drunk as you believe. Mm. In other words, he won't say they weren't drunk. He said they weren't drunk. He said they're not drunk. Black, you get drunk. They are drunk though. But this ain't Budweiser act making them act like that. That ain't no cocaine making them act like that. But this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. It's the Holy Ghost. Then Peter began to preach. First sermon on the first day of church. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did. Somebody say God did it. By him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know. You know it. You know it. 
you saw him. Some of you had your relatives touched by him. People here in the audience been healed by him. Some of y'all been protected by him. And you know being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. You have taken. That's right, you did. And by wicked hands, you crucified and you slain this Jesus. Have God raised up whereof we all are witnesses. Who? Peter said, I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he have shed for this which you now see and hear. Therefore, or because of this, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, without a doubt, that God hath made that same Jesus Watch this now, watch this. Whom you crucified. Oh, Lord. He kept sticking it to him. Bam! You did it. You crucified. Now, I want you to understand, this was during the festivities of Pentecost, which is taking place some 50 days after the crucifixion of Christ. At this celebration, there were Jews in town from out of town. They had come in from all nations. There were some in that crowd when Peter said, whom you crucified, you slain. There was some in that crowd saying, you talking about me? I don't know why you looking at me, preacher. I won't even hear, you know, I won't even hear. I ain't had nothing to do with that. I don't know why he's staring at me the whole service. You're just as guilty as the ones that nailed his hands to the cross. He paid the price. He went to the cross for your sins. You did it. That same Jesus is now both Lord and Christ. That means he's your savior and your judge. You will know him as your judge. But you better know him as your savior. Because you don't want to meet the judge without him being your savior. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Oh, Lord. Don't you ever get to the place where you can hear and not feel something. Don't, don't, don't ever let yourself get that way. Don't you get to the place where you can sit in church like a knot on a log, like a tombstone, and just stand there. Hmm. No, you better pray. Let me feel something. Let me feel something. Let me feel something. Oh God, touch me. Don't let me be comfortable where I am. Shake me. Make me nervous. Get me scared. Whatever you got to do. But let me feel something. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brother, tell me what must do hallelujah don't tell me what you learned in Bible college I don't want to hear that don't tell me what you heard some other preacher say I don't want to hear that open the book show me what thus saith the word of God hallelujah for heaven and earth shall pass away but the word of God shall never pass away God I want to know what your word has to say I got a question what shall we do are you ready for the answer? Are you ready for the answer? Then Peter said unto them, first you need to repent. That means you need to make your mind up right now. You're going to make a turnaround. Whereas you was walking that way, now you're going to walk toward Jesus. Bring all your troubles with you. 
bring all your habits with you bring your situation with you don't you wait to try to get better don't you wait to change yourself you can't do it by yourself God said come on just like you are somebody say repent then he said and be baptized every every one of you that means you in the name of Jesus Christ the name is important folks that means you oh but I don't go to church here so that means you I'm a Jehovah witness so that means you I'm a Muslim so every one of you in the name what name? Jesus said, the name of the Father. What is the name of the Father? John chapter 5 verse 43. Jesus said, I come to you in my Father's name. Paul said, because he inherited a name that is high above every name. That is the name of every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess to the glory of the Father. The Father's name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, and in the name of the Son, the Son, Matthew 1, 21, the Son's name is Jesus. And in the name of the Holy Ghost, Jesus said in John chapter 14, that the Holy Ghost, which is the Comforter, shall come in my name. When you call on Jesus, you're calling on the Father. When you call on Jesus, you're calling on the Son. When you call on Jesus, you're calling on the Holy Ghost. This is for every one of you for the remission of sin don't you understand there's no other way your sins can be washed away except by the blood of Jesus when the blood comes when the name is called you can't separate the name from the blood so when you say Jesus the blood comes and washes away every remembrance every stain of sin he said and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost you shall you gonna get some help I say you gonna get some help you're gonna get the comforter He's gonna help you through your tests he gonna help you through your trials he gonna help you through the darkness he gonna keep you walking straight he gonna talk to you when you're walking down the road he gonna wear your behind the Holy Ghost God's plan is for everybody. It's for you today. But what are you going to do with it? Some people just come to church to hear a sermon and walk out the same way they came in. They just come to church just to make themselves feel good. They're smiling on their way to hell. Multitudes, church full of people, are going to walk out their churches today. Still lost. Feeling good, but still lost. Deceived. Cheated. Because somebody didn't tell them. God's plan. 